this is a cool presentation. My background on this is, I don't remember even how, but it was literally May or June. Somehow I ended up on the website here and got lost in this whole alumni feature that had been built out. And, and then like a week later, I think Travis was uh, in an admin academy I was doing in June and I'm like, oh my goodness, I was on your, on your website and saw all that alumni stuff you're doing. So I know there's a lot of people in the call who are doing a lot with alumni. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about this since Travis and I met this week. And I've been thinking the three things that I think really stand out in what Travis is gonna present are that there's a culture around this and all of us want that in our school communities, that sense of community and coming together. Um, there's a tool that's been built out that helps facilitate this. And then the third piece is there are these instructional anchors, these places, and, and we'll hear them talk about sophomore English, for example, that really make sure all kids get the benefit of this experience so it's systemic. So with that said, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn it over to Travis. And if you have questions as he is talking, um, I will be monitoring the chat, just throw them in the chat. There we go. Well, like uh, Jason mentioned, um, appreciate the opportunity. Um, I, I've, I've found that uh, just having this cohort group, um, I've gained a lot of knowledge and uh, I appreciate uh, the people that are here. Um, I've connected with, uh, I know Jennifer from Ridgewood on, uh, on some great things they're doing at their school. And uh, hopefully the purpose of this will be to, um, to give you at least an idea or maybe a, a suggestion on uh, how to connect to your alumni, but also how to, um, how to connect careers to our students. Um, so I, uh, I said to Jason, I said, I would probably be the last person that would actually, if, if I was in high school, back when I was in high school, if you would have said that I was gonna be a principal of the high school eventually, uh, have a 32 year career uh, in education, uh, I would have um, I'd have laughed at you because uh, I had no intention of going to college after, I had no idea what I was gonna do, but uh, college was not in, in the forecast for me. So, so to come full circle and, and to figure it out, um, I, I tried to come up with a way that our students could figure it out a lot sooner than I could. Uh, what happens is uh, a lot of times I'll talk to students and maybe you run into this too, where you're asking kids, hey, what, do you, what would you like to do when you graduate? What, do you, what, do you, what are your interests? And, and they have, um, some have no clue. Uh, and some know exactly what they wanna do and we wanna help them navigate through that too. So I think um, we, we started off with this as a tool just to help students find careers and it became a lot more than that. So, um, so I'm gonna tell you uh, a few stories along the way that's gonna help, um, help you understand how, how important this was for us. And typically this is uh, done in a, a three-part harmony. In other words, Linda Vanderlees and Kim uh, Galing is with me, but uh, I'm gonna go solo today. So uh, bear with me a little bit. Um, you know, we try to hit uh, everything that uh, uh, people always ask you, you know, why, why is Career Connections important? We're going to hit on that. You know, what is it? Where can I find it? How do I, um, you know, how do I get started with this? Who benefits? I mean, we're going to try to hit all those pieces. I think um, at, at the end, hopefully you uh, gain a nugget uh, and, and you can take uh, something away. So how does it, uh, um, or why, why is this important? Um, you know, with ESSA, uh, Every Student Succeed Act, and with our career pathways, we, we feel like uh, what we have created aligns uh, directly with that. So I think from an ESSA standpoint, uh, this is going to be hugely beneficial. If you have counselors in your building that are always trying to figure out um, how to best connect with students and uh, identify opportunities and options for them. It's gonna help those people out. It's gonna help out the curriculum uh, in our English uh, classes. I'm gonna uh, be able to show you 
how we've used it in our English classes and, and the responses we've gotten from students. So, so this is the big why, this is why we've done it is because we think it's full circle. We think it encapsulates uh, so many different parts of uh, uh, education. So, you know, how did we um, begin this process? You know, I, I felt like students need help to find their path. Um, you know, and we do start this uh, process actually down in the middle school. Uh, we have uh, uh, taken it down to our middle school level. Um, and we also um, want kids to, to know about careers that uh, um, aren't your standard careers. A lot of students, uh, when you talk to them and they say, I wanna be a lawyer, I wanna be a teacher, I wanna be an accountant. Uh, those are just things they've heard. And those, that is what they know but there's so many more opportunities out there for them. And that's why uh, we felt like this was important. Um, and also it gives us a chance to really celebrate our heritage. And that we feel like is important at our school. And I think for many of you, it probably is important too, is a chance to, uh, to recognize your alumni and recognize your staff and recognize the good work they're doing. And um, so, so we, we've been able to uh, also uh, work on that front. So career connection, you know, what, what do we ask? What we started with is we said um, to our alumni, we asked them, uh, uh, you know, obviously give us your name, your graduation year, uh, the schooling that you went to or the military, or if you went right into the workforce, that's fine too. We wanted to know what your career path was, what your actual job is. And then we added, uh, again, as, our, um, as a caveat, uh, we, we wanted to uh, capture you know, their memories of Geneseo. So what do you remember about Geneseo and who impacted you? And that's gonna be really important here in, in, uh, um, in future so slides uh, when we talk about that. At first, we thought this was uh, definitely for students. We, we felt like students were gonna benefit from this. Um, and, but then we didn't realize that uh, parents were gonna benefit from it, teachers benefited from it, alumni, obviously, people relocating, uh, and even our businesses in town benefited from this. So, um, so these are the pluses that happened along the way. It was uh, um, first driven by students and helping them try to find their path. Because originally we would, and I don't know how your school operates, but it would be, you take a survey to find out what uh, interests you might have. And then from there, we're gonna research on the internet and we're gonna find jobs that uh, um, maybe through career cruising or Zello or something like that, we're gonna find uh, those jobs and we're going to give you information and then you can contact those employers to see um, how this works. For us, we put it at, at a personal level and uh, guess what? You're going to contact Geneseo alumni. So you're going to contact the people that sat in the same seats that you did. You're going to contact the people that uh, walked the same hallways that you did, had some of the same teachers that you did. And so there is an automatic connection even just by uh, putting in the subject line, Geneseo. And for your school, whatever that is, that's what we tell our students. If you put in their Geneseo alumni or you put in Geneseo, all of a sudden in their subject line, they're gonna already uh, be captured by that and say, wow, I, okay, so I'm interested. What, what's going on here? So then it's been about a three year process for us to gather all this information, to put it on a website, to, to, uh, um, you know, to put this together. But I'd like to share uh, components of our website and, and again, tell you a little bit about uh, um, how this works. Um, it's, it's probably typical to most, most search engines uh, from the standpoint that uh, we, we have, uh, you can search your alumni, you can submit your own information, you can update your information, all those type of things. Um, we, we search, you can search by degree. 
So if you know uh, what you really need in that, uh, uh, in that field, uh, that might be important for you. You can search by graduation year. So we found that uh, um, this also helps our alumni stay connected to each other because all of a sudden uh, I'm the class of 1983 for Geneseo. So I click on 1983, I can see what all my classmates, uh, where they're at, what they're doing. Uh, they can give me that information. Um, we have the, uh, the, uh, the universities and the colleges. Uh, now this is the graduate year or graduating or, or uh, um, the graduate university that they went to um, because we, we had, when we originally started this, they started listing out numbers of colleges that they went to, and then it was a mess. So we did undergraduate and we did graduate. Um, so that was important for us. And then we had to go back through and, and some people would put uh, Western Illinois University. Some people would put WIU, some people would be. So we had to try to uh, go back and then clean that up and make sure it all looked the same. So we've done a lot of the legwork there to, uh, um, to look at, and these are all of our alumni, where they've gone to, everywhere from uh, uh, you know, Harvard to Blackhawk College. I mean, so, so we, we have a, a wide variety of people, and this is about a thousand right now of our alumni. Um, our goal for the end of uh, 2021 is to be at 2000. So that's, uh, that's what we're uh, projecting. And then obviously we have the careers, the uh, different areas that uh, people are involved with. And uh, um, you can see that it's a wide variety there. Uh, we do have, you know, everything from lawyers to electricians, um, people that are in the military. Uh, we uh, we wanna stay connected to those people because uh, we have a veterans wall that we, um, that we uh, display and we wanna make sure that uh, they're involved. Uh, we have, uh, um, like I said, pilots, we have travel agents, all those kind of things. So they can, they can search by that, they can filter that. We also have it set up as a Google map. So I can click on uh, um, this here and it'll zoom in and then it will take us to Genesee alumni across the United States, in Canada, all around the world. And just like you guys have uh, alumni all around the world and you say to yourself, well, that's, uh, that's kind of nice. But as a parent, uh, it's, it's, it's really important. I, uh, I have a son that uh, got offered a job in Montana and from Illinois to Montana, I've, we've never been to Montana. He's a, uh, he's a, a sports broadcaster for um, Montana State University. So uh, when we clicked on Montana, I was able to find alumni that, uh, um, that lives in Montana and we were able to email them. So we could uh, click on them, email them and ask them about Montana. Where do you live in Montana? What is, uh, you know, what's it like? And all of a sudden he said, Bozeman, Montana is one of the growing places in the United States. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. It's like, no, there's a lot of young people out there. It's, it's a great atmosphere. And, um, and my, my, uh, my son loves it out there. He skis, he does a lot of things. So, so he's really enjoyed that, but it was nice for us to have somebody connected to that uh, place for him whenever he uh, went there. So um, we also, uh, to tell you uh, another quick story, is uh, um, I was talking to uh, a student of ours who, um, who was in the Air Force Academy. And he was planning on going to the Air Force Academy. And I said to him, I said, do you know anybody in Colorado? Do you know anybody in Colorado Springs? And he says, I, I've never been to Colorado. I don't know. I said, well, let's go look on a career, uh, our, our alumni connection here. So we started to look, and these are all the Genesee alumni in Colorado. Here is uh, uh, Colorado Springs, where we can zoom in even more. And um, we clicked on, I said, here's Beth Shawbrock. She's an alumni of there. So we clicked on her, and then all of a sudden it pops up. And I said, did you know that Beth Shawbrock is actually a professor at the Air Force Academy? And uh, uh, she's been there for 20 years. 
and she's a Genesis Hill alumni. And and almost you get goosebumps whenever you're like, wow, I I, I can help this student make a connection with somebody that, um, again, the moment you say, hey, hey, I'm a Genesis Hill alumni and I'm looking forward to going out there. And, and, and when he emailed her, she replied right back to him. It says, oh, you know, it's great to hear from you. And, and so, so we connected him with a, a, a somebody right there so that he had some comfort whenever he, he left. So, so that was a, a, a really a, a cool thing for us to have happen. Um, we have, so the other thing is, is that you can, um, it's listed alphabetical here. So you can go through the alphabet, you can scroll through and uh, see all the different things that people put. Um, here's where, again, uh, what do you remember about GHS? You know, some people put lengthy things. Some people, you know, didn't put anything. That's okay. But uh, um, some people put teachers' names. So what I purposely did was I would, um, I would randomly go into teachers' rooms and I would have this with me. And I would tell them, I would stop the class right in the middle of class. And I would say, I need to take a few minutes here. To, uh, to tell you uh, what a special teacher you have. And that this person here from graduated in 2004 or whatever, they had this teacher and they purposely put that name down. Uh, the, out of all the teachers that they've had in their career, they chose that teacher to put on. And, and you guys should be uh, very grateful that you have this person uh, teaching you that has made an impact on somebody that graduated 16 years ago. So if you want to talk about something that boosts the morale of your staff, uh, that is something that, um, that keeps them going. And in sometimes like these pandemics, they really need to understand that um, there's, there's people out there that did, did realize they made an impact on them. So it's listed in alphabetical order. You also have a search engine here. So for example, if we did, um, uh, I just search acres here. It will it will pop up and it will tell us where they are. Now we have a couple of acres in the uh, United States. We have one in Australia. Um, they're related. Uh, Todd, he's a uh, he's a firefighter. So if anybody's interested in firefighting, uh, they could uh, um, they could get in contact with Todd. Colin is a, a a sales executive. He's one of our really bright kids. Um, just a great leader. He was a captain on our, um, our state final football team, uh, just a, a super kid and, and, uh, and always willing to help our kids. In fact, he Skyped with a couple of our kids before. Uh, it's pretty cool for them. And, and uh, then we also have Kevin Akers, who I thought this was really important too. Like when we talk about uh, the current field, he says um, he's a supply management uh, you know, international logistics, but basically supply management was his degree. And um, back in the 80s, uh, probably people didn't even realize there was such a degree as that. Now there is a degree. And um, uh, some of our students have actually gone into supply management because of reading this type of stuff. It's a fast growing major, a lot of job opportunities. Uh, he, he really plugged it here. And we have a couple of our students now that are uh, um, going into that for sure next year. So it, uh, uh, it, it does help us uh, um, to have students search different areas that uh, they may not have even thought of as a, if you would have told me when I graduated high school that there would be a web page design person, uh, it didn't exist, right? So, um, so there's a lot of jobs that are being invented. We have, um, artificial intelligence, students working in that, uh, working with Google. Uh, and so that's been really nice for our, our kids too, just to see that stuff. So, so we saw how it benefited the students, but it ben benefited the teacher, I mean, the, the parent as myself, as an example. It, it benefited uh, our students that are relocating, or even if, even if an alumni is relocating, if they're going anywhere, you know, in the United States, whether it's New York or New Jersey, or they could contact somebody and say, hey, where's a good place to live? 
Where's a place that, um, you know, I should stay away from or whatever that looks like. Um, we think that's a, a big plus, plus too. So um, again, we could, we could go over story after story. And that's the cool thing is that that's what you get out of this is you get, you get a lot of great stories, but um, let's continue on to, um, you know, the program here. Okay. Let's see. I think I can get this back here. Okay. So, all right. So in sophomore English, um, you know, they, they go through at that time, it was career cruising. We're going to switch over to Zello. We think that's going to be a great platform for us. And we think it's going to work well with our, our alumni, um, you know, career connection too. Uh, we send a, uh, the, the students kind of look through, they, they connect to a, a couple of people and then they send them an email. And, and um, now I will go back and say that um, the, uh, the little Zoom, um, uh, the icons that are on the map, that's not their address. That, it's their zip code, but it's not their address. So we're not gonna stalk people. We're not gonna go up to your door and say, hey, um, hey I'm from Genesee, oh, back off a little bit. You know, you, in this day and uh, age, we don't do that. We, we just do emails. We don't ask for uh, cell phone numbers, anything like that. Now we may email them and uh, we may Skype with them later in one of our classes. Like our teachers will do that too. Our teachers use this uh, um, also. They use it to uh, examine their curriculum uh, because uh, the kids are getting right out of college and, they'll, um, and uh, our English 101 teacher will connect to students and say, hey, how is English 101? How is how, how did we prepare you for college? I mean, there's, so there's a lot of things that we can use this for. And, um, and that's what's important. But um, the sophomore English has really uh, embraced this uh, in theirs, uh, in their curriculum. So uh, our teacher there, uh, Rachel Brown, did a, a great job of uh, creating uh, a rubric for, uh, for the students uh, in this uh, exercise. Uh, she, she gave them uh, questions uh, to, to start the process, but she also uh, said, hey, add your own questions to this that might be particular for that, um, that career you're looking at. And then uh, actually a form uh, email that, uh, uh, that was used that way, um, you know, again, Students that are trying to, they could create their own, but uh, we wanted to make sure it looked formal, that make sure that it, uh, when somebody saw it, that, okay, number one, I'm gonna see that it's a connection to Geneseo. So, um, so I think that uh, that's been really beneficial. Uh, and what we found is that they send those questions and then people send answers and then they, it, there starts a dialogue back and forth and, and we asked the people in the, when they filled this out, if they would be willing to work with our students on this. And if they said no, uh, we, didn't, we didn't accept them because uh, that's what this is for. This is for uh, mainly our students to use. And uh, they, some of them just filled it out. And then uh, when we said, can we contact, can our students contact you? And, and if they said no, then we said, that's fine. But then you can't, you're not on the website. Um, the, uh, and then they, the students, uh, had a reflection piece on the whole process. Then at the end, they wrote their, uh, their own reflections. And we thought that was really, uh, a great way for them. You know, here's just a couple, I'm not going to go through and read these for you, but this is, these are just examples of, you know, um, uh, that Ali, she's, she talked to somebody that's a, attack at Mayo Clinic and, and uh, that's what she wants to get into. Um, you know, and, and all these different students had great experiences. And we actually have had um, uh, four of our students uh, go to the uh, Career Connection Conference up in Chicago. And they were, um, they were basically uh, the hit of the uh, conference uh, by a lot of people, just because uh, number one, you have students there speaking versus adults. And, um, and it was nice to hear from them 
uh, about their experience with this and how it impacted them. So now we do have, like for us, one of the things that uh, happens is um, in our process, we don't, we don't just allow anybody to submit anything without a checks and balance. And I think that's important that somehow, if you decide to do something like this, is that you consider that, is that uh, um, don't make it where there's a, um, you know, they can uh, have a password and get in. And so we have people, if they wanna edit something, it goes through us. Or if they submit things, it goes through us. So then we have a venting process. So if we had something like this, where somebody's just like, okay, I'm gonna mess around, or I'm gonna uh, type something really um, bad in there, it just, it doesn't get uploaded. Uh, and we do have disclaimers uh, also uh, on there that uh, uh, talk about the what this is used for, um, you know, because some people will try to solicit from you, can I get your list of, even our boosters want to say, hey, can I get uh, that list? Can I get it on a spreadsheet of all of our alumni? Because we want to do a fundraiser. And we said, that's not the purpose of this. This is not for that. We do send out every three years, we send out to the whole group, uh, just an email to say, hey, please look at your information and update it if you would. So we do that. So it's the most updated information that we can have. And then, um, you know, we've, we've, I've talked at a few conferences and then people always ask, well, you know, yeah, that's great. Uh, is there, how can I do this at my school? Because uh, number one, we're a school of, just so you know, uh, 870 kids in the high school. So we're not, we're not huge. Uh, we're not small. We're, we're kind of in the middle. Um, and, uh, and I can, I'm just going to take you through the process that we went through to do this. So you have an idea. Um, and some schools that are larger, you would have a staff that could just kind of take this over and run with it. And you have people in your, uh, departments that could create the website that could do all that stuff and take it over. And that, and that's perfectly fine. There's other schools that are like, I, I would like some, I would like to do this, but I don't even know where to start, you know? So I'd like to uh, share with you a couple of things. Um, so we used um, a, a website uh, to impress, which is uh, just a local one here for us. And they, uh, they did the designing. The actual process started with our students in our, uh, in our class, our website, our, our web design class. They're the ones that actually came up with the questions and came up with the um, uh, the survey pieces, all that stuff. So that was all student driven. In fact, I paid the um, I paid the winners of the uh, the people that uh, uh, came up with the most creative way to do this. I gave them gift certificates because I thought that way we're going to uh, grab our kids into this too. So, um, <clears throat> so that was that was good. Um, so we have. Um, uh, for example, for us, you know, we, we submit our alumni information, uh, we update it, we filter it, we, uh, we control all of it. And that, that we felt was really important for us is that we have control over that. Um, now, there are, uh, there are companies that will handle this for people too, that will do the, the filtering, that will do the administrative work, obviously those kind of things. Um, and, and Kim, I'll just, I just put her information up here, uh, because if, if you want a starting point, if you wanted somebody that, you know, for me, I'm always like, okay, uh, who, who do I contact in this? Do I have, I don't want to Google search it myself, uh, and find out. So I just thought I would put this up in case, uh, um, is if somebody needs some assistance or if they, they would be interested in it. Um, and then the other piece that, uh, again, another caveat of this is that um, as we're gathering this information is we designed a distinguished alumni uh, um, award uh, or created basically kind of a hall of fame of our distinguished alumni. 
you know, through this, we've connected to, um, you know, politicians, to business people. Um, you know, you, uh, we wasn't aware of that um, the, the founder of uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation, one of the co-founders of Make-A-Wish Foundation is a Geneseo alumni, uh, Linda Bergendahl. And uh, she, obviously she's on our distinguished alumni for this past year. Uh, so that, that was another piece that we were able to do was find these people that did. And then what they do is they come back and they speak at our National Honor Society National Technical Honor Society, Illinois State Scholars, that we do a big presentation, about 400 people, and, and we bring back our distinguished alumni to show our students that, hey, here's what this means. This is what you could do. You know, Susan Hendricks, she was an executive director or one of the uh, directors for the IHSA. Um, uh, John, uh, uh, John Edwards, uh, um, he, if you see uh, windmills in your area, there's a good likelihood that his company uh, put those windmills up. He did all the lighting on the Dan Ryan. Um, you know, those are those are big things that uh, we can share with our kids. One of our uh, alumni is a, uh, was a uh, producer for uh, some of the Scooby-Doo shows, which our kids get a kick out of. And then he came back early for the Distinguished Alumni and he uh, made some presentations in our classroom. So again, bringing them alumni, bringing the alumni back, whether in person or Skype, it was a great opportunity for our kids. So uh, we do have, for us, um, our method for, uh, for funding this was, uh, you know what, I went out and got some sponsors. Um, you know, I talked to Jason and I said, hey, maybe there's grant money for people that could, uh, that could pay for it. I don't know. But, um, but the moment that you introduce this to your school board or parents or any of those people, uh, they, they start jumping aboard. Uh, we had no problem uh, getting, getting supporters for it. So I want to uh, thank you for the opportunity. Hopefully uh, you found something, a nugget out of this that uh, whether it's one thing is, hey, how, how can I collect, connect back to the alumni in our school? Uh, that, that may be it or whatever that looks like. Um, and I think that's, that's all I got, Jason. Awesome. Thank you so much, Travis, for all that presentation. Um, Jen, Kelsall's commenting on how it truly embraces the importance of community and it absolutely does. Uh, one question I'll throw out to uh, that, that Travis and I talked about yesterday, but I'm gonna throw it out actually to some of the EFE directors on the call um, or others with even you know, advanced knowledge on it. Could, could some Perkins 5 money be used to help offset the cost of this? And uh, there Amy's asking the same thing. Um, if, if ISBE would be willing to use state Perkins funding for it. So um, if anybody wants to comment on that, uh, please, someone, you know, feel free to unmute. Yeah. Nina, did you unmute? To I did. Um, we have spent, I, I'm a former EFE, um, money. Hi, Amy. Um, former uh, Perkins and CTI dollars, um, especially because you're, you're reaching a, a greater audience, especially if you're utilizing this, um, you know, for your middle school as well as, you know, a, a step into it. Um, so yes, I, I do believe funds could be available for it. This is similar to the uh, career guide that uh, we used Perkins mm -hmm. and CTI funds for, and actually the state then took it over. So ISBE took that over. Um, so this would be a something similar to do for that. I think this would be great funds to that. Um, anyone also, I know I'm contemplating how to use my um, funds for the career endorse endorsement pathway, just with things being shut down. And I know I've articulated a lot of my money for external learning experiences, which I don't think are, are going to be able to happen this year. So that was one thing that I wrote down. Can I amend part of my uh, pilot grant money in order to do something like this. I think it's fabulous. Great work. Yeah, and just a little bit of technical background on it. Um, you know, and this is going to vary widely depending on who's hosting your current school district website. And it, it doesn't really have to be living where your current school district website lives. It could feel like that to a user because they click and 
and would maybe go somewhere else. Um, but in terms of cost, um, again, depending on who your website host is, this is not going to be a, a tremendous cost given some of the other costs we talk about with these, these funding amounts. And um, I really appreciate Travis talking through the data pieces too. Like it was a great example on someone's got to clean up um, WIU versus Western Illinois University. And, and you can't just populate a list. I mean, one of the schools, I like pre-populate a list of colleges and universities. I saw Denver Diesel and Mechanical or something. That, that is clearly not a post-secondary institution that I am familiar with uh, in Denver, Colorado. And so it's, it's cool though to think about in most of our high schools, we're gonna have students that end up with all kinds of different post-secondary experiences. So having that be a regular text field um, becomes important and then someone's gotta, someone's gotta clean that up. So there's a little bit of a people power issue. Um, and uh, on the flip side though, the database back end and the web front end, those are pretty manageable. And I appreciate um, uh, that, that Travis brought up the, the role that kids could play. I mean, certainly we have school districts on this call and throughout the state who could have IT career pathway kids building this. And, and the one thing I would say is, you know, you gotta think about where you're putting it and who's maintaining it. Um, uh, I, I walked into a, a role in a district where a student had built a product and we were paying the kid a couple hundred dollars a year to maintain it through college. And then the kid wasn't interested in maintaining it anymore. And, and we had high level code skills on our team and it was still something that to, unravel it was we were better off building it from scratch ourselves at that point so you do have to think through those things but it's um it's it's not not undoable and awesome in the chat um so there's some back and forth going there with some of our our efe directors about collecting some information um and sharing that with isby and i think the one thing and travis i'll let you comment on with this and i think Gina brought up the career guides as an example um, uh, where if ISBE takes on more of a role with this, the question in my mind would be how do we retain that local, like that local control? And, and there's, you know, some of that built into the career guides and, and some of that is not. And so that's, that's an interesting thing to think about from a website because um, Travis, I think, has, has done a good job outlining how important the local solution was. Right, and, and we did, um, I, I know that when we presented here somewhat locally, there's been some real small schools that said, could we team up and do like a conference one? Um, and it has, I think that that, that same, same presence to, to, to connect, because again, if, uh, uh, if I hear from uh, somebody from o Orion, Illinois, or mm -hmm. you know, Rock Ridge, it's close to us, all right. Okay, I know you're you're in our conference, or you're uh, or you're close by, proximity wise. So, so we we have um, you know said that some schools could do it that way. I think you you want to be a little careful though. I mean, obviously, um, our intent was to uh, to really just work on the uh, Geneseo alumni, and and we were a big enough school that we could handle it on our own. But so there's a there's another option for for some people. Um, and I know what Jason was saying about um, there was it was time intensive for us at the beginning uh, to kind of go through because um, I am an alumni of Geneseo, so I knew you know some of the people that were entering information, uh, so I I could already do my my vending uh -huh. process. If you um, if you don't know if somebody just all of a sudden submits information, they're really not a Geneseo alum or a your school alumni, then um, then you do need to have what, and typically then that's the yearbook check. You know, they give you a graduation year and you can check uh, check their name in that graduation year. And, and that's a that's one way to, that we have also done it too. So again, trying to, um, trying to uh, not only give you the, the positives, but the, the the angst of what we, the three years have uh, accumulated to, to this point. So, but again, I'd be happy to, uh, if somebody needs, um, you know, more information or just uh, to, 
the, I think once you to you talk about it with your uh, your if you present this to your school board or your your superintendent or whoever that is um, or even parents uh, they they typically uh, kind of fall in love with this I know ours have and uh, they really like the connection. Awesome. Other comments or questions before we sign off. So we are not back together like this until 2021. Um, I think we'll have a new Congress in session at that point. Um, that was apolitical. That was just a statement of, let me just be clear because we're recording right now. <laughs> statement of, I'm just going to leave it there. And uh, with that said, um, Travis, thank you so much for reaching out to present. Uh, we will be sending out a bunch of emails, including one about that I'll get out today to ask you to fill out a short form if you're interested in talking more and helping us make this OSHA thing happen, the machine guard training for free for um, students going into work-based learning experiences. And to Gina's point, it's a great time for us to get out ahead of that because we may not have a lot of students in a lot of workplaces until summer or next fall or even this time next year, unfortunately. But I think, I think by this time next year, we're looking good. And so we'll, we'll be well, well ready to go and practice with that. Um, and then again, a final call, if you do want to use the Career Pathway User Group as an admin academy, please fill out that form. If you're like, Jason, where's that form? Uh, you can email me, but I want to reach out to the DeKalb ROE this afternoon to get that rolling. And in the meantime, please post comments and questions and ideas uh, for one another. I wish all of you and everybody you work with the most restful winter break in history. Um, you deserve it. Um, again, I feel guilty every day that I'm not in a school district role right now. Uh, I live with it and I know what you're doing. And so let me know what I can do to help. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great Friday.